revisiting Darwin's warm little pond. Atheists were sharing the paper, Biological Evolution is Dead in the Water of Darwin's Warm Little Pond on atheist groups. They were concerned this paper could serve creationists. The paper defies Darwin, however, different from the general hysteria around the paper, the paper is not from creationist. At least, I was unable to see it. What can be said about this paper? Was Darwin wrong after all? If you are not familiar with the discussion, creationists, which are religious people trying to play scientists, they believe Darwin was wrong, as was the creator of the Big Bang Theory. They believe so because this defies the Bible, Genesis. See that proving Darwin wrong will not help on the theist God. It is a straw man fallacy. Even if you manage to prove Darwin wrong, it does not imply that God exists. When Charles Darwin first proposed the idea that life might have begun in a warm little pond with all sorts of ammonia and phosphoric salts, he opened the door to countless theories about life's origins. But recent scientific findings invite us to rethink this watery birthplace. Today, researchers are investigating the possibility that life may have begun not in an ancient ocean, but on land, possibly within shallow ponds, hydrothermal fields, or mineral-rich environments. These ideas could potentially reframe Darwin's iconic pond in a way that respects his insight while building on it with the latest advances in biology, chemistry, and geology. The modern twist on Darwin's warm little ponds hypothesis. In Darwin's era, little was known about the biochemical necessities for life. He pictured that given the right ingredients, a warm, sheltered pond could have produced primitive life forms. But this theory has had its ups and downs as new evidence suggests that the conditions on early Earth might have been quite different from what Darwin envisioned. The primordial atmosphere likely lacked the oxygen-rich environment familiar to us and, instead, was a more hostile landscape of volcanic activity, scorching temperatures, and acidic rain. Under these conditions, water may not have been the most conducive environment for sustaining the chemical reactions necessary for the first signs of life. This has given rise to the idea that land environments, particularly areas rich in minerals and geothermal activity, may have been more favorable. One key reason scientists are revisiting land-based theories is the importance of wet-dry cycles. In water, organic compounds are often too diluted to form the larger molecules necessary for life. However, on land, cycles of drying and rehydrating could have allowed these molecules to concentrate, facilitating chemical reactions that build complex molecules like RNA and DNA. Such cycles, particularly in mineral-rich environments with clay and other substrates, could serve as catalysts, helping small organic molecules form longer chains. Hydrothermal fields, an alternative genesis? Another hypothesis gaining traction is the hydrothermal field theory. In areas with active geothermal activity, like volcanic landscapes, geothermal pools create unique conditions. These fields provide high heat and rich mineral deposits that may encourage the formation of complex organic molecules. Additionally, they offer a natural cycle of drying and rewetting, similar to the cycles needed to form RNA and other key molecules for life. These hot, chemically dynamic environments may have supplied early life with an energy source and the necessary conditions for molecular complexity. This theory contrasts with hydrothermal vents deep in the ocean, where some scientists believe life may have started. While these underwater locations do provide minerals and heat, they lack the cyclic wetting and drying processes present on land that are now thought to be essential for the formation of nucleic acids. Given the difficulty of forming stable, self-replicating molecules underwater, hydrothermal fields on land provide a plausible alternative. Revisiting Darwin Is evolution dead in the water? The question of whether life originated on land or in the ocean isn't just a matter of location. It impacts how we view evolution itself. If life indeed began in a land-based environment, this could suggest that evolution is not limited to the passive, slow accumulation of favorable mutations. Instead, it suggests that the very beginnings of life were driven by highly dynamic, variable environments that promoted complex molecular assemblies. This new view doesn't mean Darwin was wrong, but, rather, highlights how his initial insights were limited by the scientific knowledge of his time. As we peel back layers of our understanding, it's clear that evolution, much like science itself, isn't static. It adapts and evolves based on new evidence. In Darwin's day, 
The concept of evolution as gradual adaptation within stable conditions was revolutionary. Today, as we explore the early Earth environment, we find that evolution itself might have started from something inherently chaotic, with life springing from conditions that forced rapid adaptations and the assembly of complex molecules. Where do we go from here? New theories about the origin of life invite us to consider that evolution may have been jump-started in a terrestrial environment rich with variability, dry cycles, and mineral catalysts. By studying life's origins in environments with these unique properties, scientists hope to better understand how non-living molecules transitioned to the organized, self-replicating structures we recognize as life. The idea of a warm little pond might still hold water, just not in the way Darwin imagined. Whether on land or in the ocean, life's origin remains a mystery with profound implications for our understanding of evolution and our place in the cosmos. As we venture into this unknown territory, each discovery pushes us closer to answering one of humanity's most enduring questions. How did life begin? And in Darwin's words, what a grand view that answer might provide.